Hey everyone, it's Wednesday and welcome back to Major Hype. I'm your host, Max Maxwell, where every single weekday, Monday through Friday, I do a show about entrepreneurship, money, and real estate. Today's no different, so let's get started. Our first story is something I'm sure many of you have been wondering about, these crazy gas prices. Well, there might be some type of pain relief in sight because President Biden is considering a gas tax holiday. Now, I know you're probably thinking, what the hell does that even mean? So let's check it out. Right now, the national average of per gallon of gas is $5. Overall, gasoline prices rose 48% over the past year. Now, I remember when a gallon of gas was like $2.35. Those were the good old days. As we all know, the 4th of July is right around the corner, and Biden is considering waiving the federal gas tax, which would shave off about 18 cents per gallon. Although it isn't guaranteed that all the savings will be passed to consumers, I wonder why, several states have already introduced or implemented a state-level gas tax holiday, including Connecticut, Georgia, Maryland, and New York. New York? I thought they loved taxes. Now, a lot of people are hesitant to pass this because with everything, there's a push and a pull. With gas tax holiday, the Penn Wharton budget model estimates that suspending the tax would cost taxpayers or the people $20 billion over 10 months. That money would come from funds that are already earmarked for like road improvements. And we all know New York City needs road improvements. But let's think about that. We're collecting around $20 billion in taxes in a fuel over just 10 months. That's insane. So maybe the actual taxes in itself in fuel need to be lowered. But then I think if you do the math, that's about $83 million a day that the government collects from oil tax. Insane. Our second story is an awesome one. I know a lot of the news has been fairly grim lately between Ukraine pandemic and the economy, but this new fund was announced yesterday and it aimed to help and support minority-owned real estate development firms with capital and other resources. It's called Ebiera. At least that's what I think it's called. The fund will serve as an option for developers in their early stage to have access to capital through loans, technical assistance, coaching, and everything else. I was reading more about this and they said in the initial stage, the fund was supported with $11 million. Now over the next two years, it will work with about 10 developers with the goal to create between 100 and $200 million in economic development impact. The fund is in partnership with Invest Detroit and Urge Imprint. This is the perfect time for me to mention a message from our sponsor. If you're looking to get more deal flow and you're wondering what the best real estate tool is to take your business to the next level, consider PropStream. PropStream is the best real estate software built from the ground up for investors and all real estate professionals. With their powerful data and targeted marketing, you can increase efficiency and find more investment opportunities. PropStream helps you locate, evaluate, and market to highly motivated buyers and sellers from the web or the smartphone right on your app. Now visit the link in the description to get a seven day free trial along with free courses on this channel to help you step up your game. In our next story, the investment giant Blackstone recently sold a cosmopolitan of Las Vegas property. It exceeded the amount acquired by a few billion dollars. Now due to the resort's high traffic and success overall, the $5.6 billion deal was also the latest high value sale in Southern Nevada. And it did not generate any real estate transfer tax. Simply put, the real estate transfer tax is a tax that is imposed by states, counties, or municipalities on the privilege of transferring real property within the jurisdiction. Nevada's statewide real estate property transfer tax is $1.95 per every $500. Clark County, where the Cosmo is located, adds an extra 60 cents. So doing the math on a $5.6 billion deal, they would have nearly to pay about $30 million in taxes on this deal. So what's gonna come of this? Well, the Nevada governor, Steve, said that this should be taken up in the next legislative session. So we may see some sort of suit or some type of penalty on this deal because that's a massive chunk of change. $30 million? Whew. New York State is set to inject $200 million worth of leases to the local cannabis real estate market. $200 million? That's pretty impressive. It's going to have up to 150 commercial facilities. It will be given to local social equity projects to step them into the state's new recreational market. This move is considered the first in the U.S. cannabis industry and if successful, can provide a roadmap to other states to develop local social justice programs. And we all know we need them because there's a lot of people locked up for small marijuana charges and people selling marijuana on a street corner in a store. Apparently the money is being spent only on retail locations, not to cultivators or other sectors. The property is leased for 10 years 
and will never actually be purchased in the pipeline. The announcement raised concerns among local entrepreneurs and real estate brokers. Some urged that the real estate agents working on behalf of the state may increase the competition and price of small businesses looking for retail properties. As many of us know or can assume, there's already a crazy rental market in New York. And some of these storefronts are paying up to $45,000 on their current leases. Pretty cool story. I'll be curious to see if this plays out. A state agency directly investing into medical recreational cannabis in the name of social justice? This is something I maybe can get behind. Now, this next story is pretty interesting. Two building owners have filed a federal proceeding against the city of St. Paul. They're saying that St. Paul's new rent management obligation is unconstitutional. Now, these owners are also saying that the city's annual increase of 3% violates the U.S. Constitution. Now, rent control is a whole nother beast, but 182 cities in the U.S. already have rent control laws. These laws place limits on the amount a landlord can demand for leasing a home or renewing a lease. The builder's owners say that the city simply did not hire enough staff to consider tax exemption requests and hear the useless appeals if tax exemption were not granted. Now, this is something we all had a taste of, especially investors over the past few years with the local city and offices being closed or forcing people to work from home in very limited hours. Now, I'm going to keep my eye on this story because it's important. Now, with rents already being outrageous, this would have a huge impact if rent control is found unconstitutional. A group of massive companies, and I mean massive, I'm talking Meta, Microsoft, and NVIDIA announced Tuesday the formation of a group to oversee the development of the metaverse. Think about that. Oversee. The news was positive for a number of metaverse stocks as we're finally seeing the inception of potentially the next big thing when it comes to the internet. The metaverse standard form hopes to establish operational standards for the metaverse. Now, while I was in Dubai earlier this year, I got a look into the future of the metaverse and I shared some of my insights as what I think was gonna happen in the upcoming years. I'm very uh, bearish on that. I'm not bullish on the metaverse yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. but the, 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 the theory that we have... something as well? No, no. Okay. <laughs> the theory that I have is the, re the reason why real estate is valuable is because you and I say it is. There's one of those buildings. There's one of that piece of land that it can sit on. But there's 60 different worlds in the metaverse. And I think they're growing even more, right? So if there's 60 Bush Khalifas, then what's the value of one? Correct. Right? And so you got to think who is going to, who has invested so much time and money into creating, going to create the real metaverse. And it's a company that changed their name to Meta, Facebook. Everybody has a Facebook profile, whether you use it or not is up to you. So then they're going to become the central place where there's one New York City, there's one Dubai, and that's where you buy because everybody's going to agree that this is the real meta of the world. Everything else is going to fall to the wayside. So I see people spending $300,000 on some virtual land. It's a bet. It's a risk you can take, but there, you got to wait. You got to look at the whole ecosystem and be like, there's one company. Look, a, a big company like Facebook, one of the biggest companies in the world, changed their name. So you got to think where their vision is. This list right here represents some of the companies that have joined this group. This is some of the biggest providers in the computing and online service world, from graphic card giants to creator tools to games and furniture. The virtual world is slowly becoming a reality. Now, some of you may be thinking oversight in the metaverse is exactly what we didn't want. But think about it. There may be some need for oversight in the actual meta world. Let's keep an eye on this because I'm wondering what this new group is gonna actually do with the metaverse. My final story tonight, I wanted to talk about the history of the recessions in the United States. There have been almost 19 of them, but I'll spare you the ones from the 1700s and the 1800s and show you ones from the 20th century and the 21st century. The panic of the 1907 lasted from May 1907 to June 1908. It was caused by speculators' losses that spread to trust companies. Now these firms acted like banks, but had low Reserves. This is when the Congress created the Federal Reserve System to prevent future collapses. The biggest economic crisis in the U.S. history, the AKA the Great Depression, was actually two closely related recessions. The first one was a downturn in August of 1929 to March 1933. The second lasted from May 1937 to June 1938. Unemployment reached 25% in 1993 and remained in double digits until World War II began. Now, in 2008 and 2009, the Great Recession lasted from December 2007 to June 2009. 
it was the longest contraction since the actual Great Depression. The subprime mortgage crisis triggered a global bank credit crisis in 2007. And by 2008, the damage had spread to generally every economy by the use of derivatives. GDP in 2008 shrank three quarters. Unemployment rose to 10%. But here's a fact, something to think about. History proves economy slowdown does not actually equal a housing crisis. Listen, four out of the last six recessions, home prices actually appreciated. Home prices only fell minimal in 1992 and then nearly 20% during the housing crash of 2008. And that's exactly what it was, a housing crash. So recessions don't actually mean that real estate will go down. Now, when we say the word recession, most of us automatically think of 2007, 2008. But there was been 19, 18 other recessions. And these recessions all did not affect real estate. So keep that in mind. Don't correlate the word recession with the housing downfall like we had in 2008. Okay, everyone, that's this episode of Major Hype. It's Wednesday and I'm done. But listen, almost 50% of you right now watching this video do not subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm on the road to 400,000 and I want you to be a part of that. So smash the subscribe button, turn on the notifications so you know when I drop new content and smash that like button if you like this video. Also comment below because I love to hear from you guys. And don't forget, tomorrow's Thursday, so I'm gonna see you again. This is Max Maxwell and I'm out.